too cool. It's the Tom Likas Show. That was awesome. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning into the Tom Likas Show. And I must tell you, I just got back from Las Vegas last evening after seeing the whipping that Oscar De La Hoya took from Manny Pacquiao. I mean, this was not a decision after 12 rounds. This was not controversial. Like, I don't think anybody in that arena thought that Oscar won the fight. Uh, Oscar himself, in his remarks after the fight, uh, saluted Manny Pacquiao and said, uh, I think it was said to him that uh, Manny Pacquiao still saw him as his idol. And uh, Oscar said, no, no, it's the other way around. Uh, you are now my idol. That's pretty outrageous. What a fight that was. Did anybody see the fight? Did anybody pay to watch the pay-per-view fight between uh, Manny Pacquiao and Oscar De La Hoya on Saturday? I was sitting there in the 10th row for the fight. And it was a, an outrageous experience to behold. The excitement, the noise... Uh, the disbelief when we saw Oscar getting brutalized out there, it was remarkable. It was interesting to me that uh, Oscar remained a slim favorite uh, with the odds makers in Vegas. It uh, was amazing to me how many people I spoke to, many of whom are friends of mine who happen to be Mexican or Mexican-American, who uh, believed 100% that Oscar was going to win. But uh, Oscar de la Hoya was... Um, not just the loser, he got creamed. He absolutely got creamed, and now Manny Pacquiao takes over as the big man on campus. It was uh, truly amazing, and I'm wondering, uh, the first thing I wondered at the end of this fight, when you saw Oscar's uh, face all puffy, uh, all uh, banged up, was this. Isn't it time, and, and by the way, I love Oscar as much as anybody, as a personality, for the things he gives back to the community, for the great career he's had. But uh, just like I didn't want to see Michael Jordan come back, isn't it time for Oscar De La Hoya to retire? Isn't this it? Isn't this it? By the way, I want to tell you something really ironic. And uh, first of all, let me tell you, I'm a fan of Tecate beer, and nothing goes with a plate of chips and salsa like Tecate. It's fantastic. I'm a big fan. And what I'm about to say is in no way a knock on Tecate, uh, more or less just an unfortunate thing that happened. This is absolutely true. On billboards between the airport in Vegas and the MGM Grand, and on various billboards and posters around the MGM Grand Garden Arena were signs for Tecate, one of the sponsors of the fight. And the signs said in Spanish, okay, they were in Spanish, but here's what, here's what it said about Tecate. They called Tecate the beer for, for those who don't throw in the towel. <laughs> How unfortunate is that? Did Oscar not get a Tecate after the fight? Oh, my. Outrageous. But I was amazed at the denial people were in. People don't want to see Oscar go, and I understand that because he's been so popular. But, I mean, how many people put money down believing that uh, Oscar was going to win this fight just because they love him, just because they, they can't believe he would lose? Now, keep in mind, Oscar's lost before. He's lost six fights, two of them to uh, Shane Mosley. And uh, Shane is fighting, by the way, next month, right here in L.A. We talked to him not long ago when we were promoting this fight, as a matter of fact. But, um, you know, I saw, and as I said on the air, I called this fight. I told you that Pacquiao, I thought Pacquiao was going to win. Because I'd seen the last three Pacquiao fights, and the guy is just, I said this on the air the other day, he's a machine. He's an absolute punching machine. He's shorter and even smaller than Oscar. And it didn't make any difference at all. I mean, Oscar got brutalized. So, yeah, I'm wondering if you saw the fight. wonder if you put money down on the fight. wonder how you feel about the fact that Oscar threw in the towel at the beginning of the ninth round. 
Wondering if you think Oscar De La Hoya should retire. Let's talk about all of this. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's the Tom Likas Likas Show. Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. 1-800-5800-TOM. Talking about the fight Saturday night between Oscar De La Hoya and Manny Pacquiao. Did you see it? What is your reaction to it? Did you lose money on it? Are you upset? Oscar threw on the towel. What do you think about that? Should he retire? You tell me. Manny on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. I couldn't wait to talk to you about this. Here we are. Here we are. Um, Oscar De La Hoya, I've been a, lo- a long time fan. I'm Mexican American, so I've been a you know I've supported him, even though a lot of my fellow uh, Mexican Americans haven't uh, supported him. You know, through the years, I've supported him through some fights where he was kind of questionable in his uh, desire to win the fight. Uh, and this fight, just I mean, I think his his reputation is just diminished. In my eyes, I, w- I wouldn't pay to see another fight. I wouldn't even watch this, another one of his fights. Is that because he threw in the towel? It, it's because. The amount, yeah, the, I mean, you watch the build-up, you watch the build up. they have this 24-7 show, and, and you watch the build-up, and he, he made it seem like he was going to go to war, and, and in my opinion, watching the fight, he literally, it seemed like from the second round, once he figured out this guy was too fast and was hitting him, Oscar doesn't like to get hit. Once he figured out that was inevitable, it was going to happen, it seemed that Oscar literally just gave, just threw him the towel from the second round, you know, and, and did everything but just out of the ring. Well, I will say that, um, uh, you know, although his face was swollen, uh, he wasn't cut uh, all that much or all that badly. Uh, he wasn't actually knocked out uh, uh, or even knocked out at any point in the fight. So um, maybe he did throw in that towel a little early. Yeah, and, and that's the thing. He was getting hit, but Pacquiao being the smaller fighter, um, which was supposed to be a disadvantage, it wasn't, you know, that, those were hits that were going to scar up De La Hoya. They are going to mark him up. But nothing of knockout potential. Pacquiao didn't hit him with anything, you know, to knock him out. And I've seen Pacquiao, as well as you have, fight other fighters that he's demolished their face. I mean, he's rearranged them. And they're still asking for more. Well, I do believe that had that fight gone on or gone the distance, uh, that that's exactly what would have happened. I mean, let's face it. uh, According to the experts, Pacquiao won, like, every round. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree with you there. I think if, if it had gone it, you know, any longer... Eventually, it would have been maybe a referee would have had to stop it. Delhoy might not have went down, but I mean, Delhoy wasn't even fighting; he wasn't throwing any punches. And that would that would end Oscar's uh, singing career for sure. <laughs> that's that's the only career he has left in front of him besides <laughs> promoting. Because boxing, in my social circle and my associates, my friends, family, he's done. I mean, literally, he. I don't even think he has the audacity to try to have another pay per view fight after that performance and all the money he gets got paid. He needs to give some of that back. So some of the people that paid, you know, so fifty bucks to watch him on TV, and it was it was it was embarrassing. It was really embarrassing. Thank you, Maddie, for the call. It's Pete on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Yeah, I just want to say he was pretty much a punching bag. He wasn't throwing any punches. He was just staying there, getting hit all the time. If you look at his career, I come from a you know I come from a a fighting family. You know, my dad was a boxer in Cuba for God knows how many years. If you take a look at his career, he really never fought anybody in his prime. The only two guys that I see that he put a good fight were Tito Trinidad and Ike Corte. Everyone else he fought was beyond their prime. He fought Chavez when he was, what, 36, 37? The same thing happened to him when he fought Chavez. He didn't come out in the eighth round. Same round, same everything. He should just hang it up. Hang it up. Yeah. Uh, I think now is the time, and you know Oscar's retired before, but I think now is the time for him to uh, retire uh, before he embarrasses himself, because I do think he was definitely on that edge of embarrassing himself Saturday night. Pretty sure he's going to go down as one of the most richest boxers and you know of all time. But he, he, here, here's the thing about boxers. They want to be known as legends, legendary boxers like like Sugar Ray Robinson and Sugar Ray Leonard, boxers like that. The thing about Oscar, he, uh, I mean, he's really, I mean, he made a lot of money. I, I give him that. He made a lot of money. But as far as, you know, like I said, only two fights. 
that he showed a good boxing skills. That was, I mean, I'm pretty sure you saw the fight. It was against Trinidad. I give him that fight. I don't know how Trinidad well, won that I, fight. I gotta but tell you something. The consensus on Oscar De La Hoya is that unlike other champions over the years, he did not duck a fight. Uh, he fought all the people he was supposed to fight. Um, well, he was supposed to actually fight Margarito, but he didn't want a piece of Margarito. I don't. I mean, if if that would have happened, he his Margarito would have decapitated his head, his head. I mean, if Packer did that to him, imagine what Antonio Margarito would have done to him. All I can say is that um, I do believe that uh, Oscar is a very smart guy who has shown business acumen, who has not squandered the money he made. He's not a Mike Tyson. Uh, he put that money away. He is investing in all kinds of enterprises, uh, most notably uh, real estate uh, in L.A., uh, downtown, and East L.A. both. And, um, you know, I think that uh, that's the logical next step for him to take, and he should start taking it because uh, yep. this was... It, it was embarrassing, and I felt, uh, I felt badly... Of course, I enjoyed being at the fight, and I enjoyed seeing Pacquiao's performance. But it, I, you know, I felt bad for Oscar because we've liked him for a long time. Yeah, you know, he's he's a good guy. You know, like you said, he takes care of his people, his community. But I mean, when you don't come out to fight anymore, you should hang it up. Don't even plan another fight. Stick to your promoting. Stick to your making money. And did you have a problem with the fact that he threw in the towel? I did actually. I did. I did. I wanted him to, you know, go out there and and put everything out there, man. Because you're you're a boxer. You're there to fight. You did know? you see the Takate ads? I did actually. I was actually. <laughs> I had a few of, a few of those ads. You know. Don't you think that's funny? <laughs> uh, you know what? Hey, hey, it's all money, Tom. You know that. Yeah, but it's you know. By, by the way, they don't throw in the towel at fights very often. But to have chosen that slogan for this fight, how unfortunate! I'll tell you this. I'll leave you at this. You put me in there with Tyson any time, I'll take a beating like that. Twenty-two <laughs> million. Twenty-two million. That's how much he made. I give me twenty-two million, and I mean, I'll go in there with Tyson. I don't care. <laughs> give me twenty-two million. I'll give you the world. <laughs> You have a good one, Tom. Take care. You too. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Roger on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Likas. What's up, buddy? Not much. So um, I called you last week, and uh, I was the one who told you that I was going to end before nine and a half rounds, and you made fun of me. That surprised me. You're right. I give you credit. You were right. <laughs> I mean, who so would think that Oscar, fun. except for you, who would think that Oscar De La Hoya, most people thought De La Hoya was going to win. I didn't think he was going to win the fight, but I didn't think he was going to throw in the towel on the ninth round. Oh, my God. I was very surprised to see that but coming from oscar it's pretty typical i mean a pretty boy boxer he doesn't like to get hit we all know that we everybody knows that so i kind of saw it coming you know i really hope yeah you know, i wouldn't have mind if i went to win 12 rounds i love people going at it but i don't know it's it's, it's, it's one of those things he, he's done for he's been done he's old and um to him you know a lot of people are saying that the fight was staged i don't believe that one bit i mean he, he took the poundings you know you saw his face but I think, realistically speaking, if you really did see his eye, I don't think he could really see from that eye, and it was going to be so, so swollen that it could have probably been dangerous for him, you know? As far as if it would have if it would have been gashed up, there would have been a lot of blood coming out from that eye. So, but um, how, besides the fight, how did you enjoy yourself in Vegas? What else did you do? Well, I wasn't there for very long. I went. I did a radio show Saturday afternoon. You may or may not have I heard. Was, I was listening to that one, yeah. Okay. And then I left at 6 o'clock. I left the radio station in Vegas. And I went uh, right to the MGM Grand, uh, checked my bags at the Bell Captain, and went right in. Cool. And so there was not a lot of time to do much of anything else. I hear you. I hear you. Well, I just wanted to comment on that because um, I know that you know you were making fun of me about that one, but you Monty came through and um, he I came knew through. I knew he was good, and I'd seen his last three fights previous to this one, and I, I I believed he would win, even though many people in SoCal did not believe that, and they were betting Oscar. Uh, that's where the action was going in Vegas. It was going towards Oscar. Yep. Yep. Uh, I wish I, 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 I would have bet a lot more money. But I, I'll <laughs> tell you what: if I got there early enough. I would have bet Pacquiao in the fight, but I don't get into those over unders, and you see why. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> well, hey, Tom, can you uh, can you take me on bong hit tribal style? Here you go, Roger. Oscar De La Hoya threw in the towel Saturday night. Did you see it? 
What's your opinion about all of this? Omar on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How's it going? Great. All right. So this is my take on it, man. I think it was fixed. Fixed? I think it was fixed. Check this out. If if Oscar wins, there's nothing left for the sport. I mean, you're already competing versus MMA. I mean, it's just Oscar. Now, check who Oscar has. He has all these fighters that are fighting, Um, what's that, a 140 class? Um, yeah. Welterweight? Right, they're all golden boy promotions, you know. So I mean, if I, if you hype up Pacquiao right now, which will be good for the sport, then Oscar being the good businessman that he is, you know, he has all those fighters to just make those big pay per view fights. You know what I mean? Well, that's true, but uh, I mean, look, what 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 used to happen uh, in the bad old days of boxing would be after a fight like this one Saturday, it would take a couple of weeks, then they'd announce the rematch. And uh, then uh, there'd be another uh, a couple of hundred million dollars on the table. <laughs> I hope Oscar's not going to do that. Now, is there, is there a cost for a rematch under the contract? Do you know that? I don't. I didn't read the contract. I have no idea. All I know is that uh, I would hate to see that happen because uh, Oscar got brutalized. I mean, I don't know if you saw the fight, but uh, he got brutalized. And check this out, though. That's one more. That's something else that just bothered me was. He fought versus, uh, what's his name, um, uh, Pretty Boy, Mayweather, right? Yeah. It was a year ago, and he looked good. He was in good condition. I mean, like, are you going to really tell me that age was a factor, that, it, 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 you know, a year ago, you fought such a good fight, even though you didn't win, you should have, you should have finished that 12th round? I don't know that age was a factor, but I do think that Pacquiao was so fast uh, that guy punch. I, I keep saying it. I keep using the phrase. I overused it, but he, he punches like a machine. I mean, he throws so many punches. Did you see the statistics on how many punches were thrown and landed in that fight? Oh man, he landed more than Oscar actually threw. That right, exactly right, exactly right. Now let me say before I go to the next caller, many people call here and claim to be somebody. They say they are somebody, and then they make a statement of some kind. Uh, we don't have the resources or the staff to call people back, verify who they are. Uh, so uh, we that uh, we always tell you to take these calls with a grain of salt. Uh, we hope they are who they say they are, but we tell you in advance before they make a comment, who knows? They could be an imposter, and we have no way of checking. But uh, let me bring our next caller on the air. It's uh, Sassy on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. I'm a big fan, and I don't care if you don't believe that I'm your sister, but I am. You're, Os so you're actually... Oscar De La Hoya's sister? Yes, I am. Okay. Anyways, we're just, uh, me and my boyfriend were listening to you on the way over here. We just got back from Vegas, and um, yeah, I mean, it was, I was there. It was devastating to watch him go down that way, and, uh, but all I can say, and I mean, of course, I'm going to back him up. He's my brother, and um, he's going to have his true fans behind him 100% no matter what. I mean, he's accomplished so much. He's fought the greatest, He's and he went down with the greatest. It happens to everybody. Now, do you think he'll fight again? Uh, no, I personally don't think he will. And, um, I mean, I saw him in the locker room, and he, he told me himself, you know, he's like, uh, my mind and my heart was in it, but my body wasn't in it. And I saw that, you know, uh, it's hard. I, I even choke up talking about it because it's, it's, it was really hard, uh, to see him go down that way. I think it was hard for everybody who loves him to see him go down that way because oh, yeah. it wasn't even yeah. close. No, not at all. He didn't, I mean, I, from the first round, I, I noticed that, that, you know, something was up, something was wrong. And, uh, I, I had a, feel, a big feeling he was not going to win that fight. And, but I mean, uh, there's nothing he could do. I mean, his his camp, he did wonderful in his camp. He, he I think that's, he gave it all uh, up there. And once he was there in the ring, like, it just, it wasn't him. And how do, how do you, when you say it wasn't him, how do you mean that? Oh, uh, what I mean is just, you know, he wasn't, he wasn't on his toes. He wasn't throwing his jab as, as he usually does. And, and he just, he was taking punches. I mean, he, like, everybody saw that. He, he took the punches and, um, and it just, that's how, you know, it was just hard, hard, hard seeing them, uh, get brutalized like that. But, uh, yeah, that's, that's what I mean. I mean, he, him not being on his toes, uh, everybody knows, you know, Oscar, when he's doing good, he's on his toes and throwing, throwing those jabs and, and, and he's quick also. He could have been as quick as, as, uh, Pacquiao, but, um, he just, the, the boxing style that Pacquiao had, I mean, it was just, 
uh, for him, I, I just, you know, it was probably impossible to, to get around and, and beat. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I don't know if you saw any of the recent Pacquiao fights, but oh, I, thought yeah. that, I thought there was going to be a tall order for Oscar. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, Pacquiao, he is, man, hats off to him. He's, he's a true champ. He's a great person. Um, I mean, there's nothing, and for those people who think that was fixed, it wasn't, that was all real. So, I mean, there's nothing else to be said, but, you know, that Pacquiao's a new champ. Totally cool. Well, I'm so glad you called in. I appreciate it. No problem. And we're a big fan. Can you take me out Kobe style, please? Yes, Sassy, I certainly can. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. 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 There goes Sassy. She says she is Oscar's sister, and uh, I believe it. But you always take these calls with a grain of salt. I remind you. You never know who's tuned in here. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. Did you see the fight between Oscar De La Hoya and Manny Pacquiao on Saturday night? I was at the fight. Maybe you watched it on pay-per-view. Maybe you went to the fight. Did you see it? What are your reactions to it? Oscar threw in the towel in the ninth round. Some people are upset. Some people are sad to see uh, uh, Oscar's uh, getting beaten up that way. And uh, many people are afraid to see him go. Let's get your reaction to it. Come on, Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. It's the Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show on 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Just got back from Vegas. I saw Molly Pacquiao... Brutalize Oscar De La Hoya, who threw him the towel on the night round on Saturday night. Did you see it? What is your reaction? It's Joe on the Tom Likas show. Hello. How's it going, Tom? Okay. Listen, I wish I would have been payday on Friday because I would have put it all on Pacquiao. Seriously, the you know it was a great fight from the perspective that it was you know the underdog put up a good good fight. All these people that are talking about that it was fixed. I don't believe it. They, they didn't see the fight. First of all, if it would have been business, in my pers- my opinion, it would have been like um, it would have gone all twelve rounds, and Pocket would have won. So that the rematch would have been there. You know, there would have been some doubt. But it was obvious who won that fight. It was there was it was there was no ambiguity. You know what I mean? And hello, now I'm right here. Oh. I'm the blessing to. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, so anyway, uh, oh, and then. You know, by him throwing in the towel in the ninth round, in the corner, I thought that was just awful. I mean, I would have paid for the rematch, maybe if it would have gone all 12, but come on. Now when you throw in the towel like that, I don't even know. I think, I think that was his last fight, seriously. Well, uh, the woman who said she was his sister, she said uh, that she spoke to him, and she believes it's his last fight, too. Oh, yeah, that was probably his sister, too. I saw her on the pay-per-view. And it was the first fight I ever paid for at home, only because it was just crowded everywhere else that was having it. So, yeah. oh man, I I, I want to tell you something. I I do not regret uh, spending the money to fly to Vegas and see that fight. Yeah, I did it on okay. short notice. I put a little trip together very fast. Yeah, uh, and um, I was thrilled to be there because it was history in the making. Yeah, you know what? And I hadn't seen Pacquiao fight. All I had seen was, you know, those specials that they have the whole week before. Yeah. And Pacquiao just looked amazing. He just looked too quick, even for when Oscar was in his prime, you know. He just, you know. The other thing was that at the time of the fight, Pacquiao was actually heavier than at wait time. So, I mean, I wonder if that had anything to do with it. But just, you know, Oscar had nothing to, to counter anything that he had. No. Absolutely not. I had no idea that it was going to be uh, that... Uh, big of a difference between them. I, I I was blown away. Yeah, totally, totally. But I, I thought it was a good fight. I mean, I didn't mind paying for it, even though I mean I was an Oscar fan. But seriously, Pacquiao made made it a good show, definitely. Joe, thank you for that. It's Mike on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Thanks for taking my call. I sure. appreciate it. Mm-hmm. First, first time, long time. Cool. Uh, Tom, <laughs> All right, we'll get a better connection on you. Gil on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How are you doing? Doing okay. Yeah, first of all, you know, I'd, I'd like to say that, you know, uh, 
Yeah, Oscar got beat, and, you know, all great champions eventually, you know, get beat. There's very few that don't. Uh, the one caller that called in saying that, you know, that, that he never fought any of the great ones, I just don't believe that comment, you know. He fought, he never ducked nobody. He fought everybody that was available at the time. For So for him to be saying that, that he didn't fight any great ones, I just don't buy that. Now, I honestly believe that, that Oscar underestimated Pacquiao's speed, you know, because uh, any boxer, I have five sons and all of them box, and uh, if you're a right-handed fighter, uh, your, your, your game plan going in against a left-handed fighter is usually pretty easy. You don't even have to jab them that much. You just keep your, your, uh, your lead foot, your left lead foot on the outside of his lead right foot, and basically all you got to do is just punch him with your right hand. But, like I said, you know, I just think Oscar underestimated his speed, and unfortunately, I think that's the end of his career. But let's just, you know, face the fact that he's a great champion, and probably nobody has done what he has done for the community of East L.A., believe me. Wow. Gil, thank you for that. By the way, anybody wants to see that unfortunate billboard uh, from Tecate, in case you have not seen it, uh, go to our MySpace, myspace.com slash Tom Likas myspace.com slash t-o-m-l-e-y-k-i-s you can also write your comments under that picture if you want to but uh there's the uh billboard from Ducate. and uh if you look at it and you translate it uh from spanish it says uh for those who don't throw the towel meaning like for those who don't throw in the towel and uh <laughs> the towel was thrown in that fight one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. It's Mike, and let's try the uh, connection again here. Hello, Mike. I mean, yeah. Tom. yes. Hey, buddy. I'm sorry about before. Sure. Um, listen, I mean, bottom line is this: I was really pissed about spending my money Saturday night, and I'll tell you why. Uh, like a lot of people, I'm really affected by the economy, but I wanted to treat myself because I've been an avid boxing fan for so long, and I figured, you know, this is going to be a hell of a fight. Why not? You know, why not treat myself? It's like going out and, you know, spending money on a, on a great dinner, um, even though you really can't afford it, and I was pissed. And I'll tell you why. Not so much that Oscar threw in the towel, but the undercard was an embarrassment. There was these two fights that lasted about three minutes each. One fighter didn't even show up to fight, meaning that he just got knocked out. Like he took a, seemed like he took a dive. And the other guy just simply sucked. And then they had 40 minutes to kill for uh, the main event, which this is the first time I ever witnessed that we have that much time to kill. And then the main event comes around. And look, I respect Oscar De La Hoa. He made a, a, you know, made a great name for himself and made all this money and God bless, lived the American dream. But the thing is this, when you know that you're asking people to spend this much money, an economy this bad, the last thing you can do, the least you could do, I should say, is get off your ass and give us one last round. Don't, I mean, there's a code with boxers. You don't go down without a fight. You go down swinging. And it just made me sick that I can't believe I spent this much money on a guy who threw in the towel when all he had to do was just give us just one last round. I felt that he owed it to us. I mean, come on, man. Well, an awful lot of people uh, disagree with you, though, uh, like George. Let me get George in here. You don't agree with Mike, do you? No, I don't agree with Mike, Tom. Why not? Well, first of all, uh, I think it was a, a great pay-per-view event. You see uh, Manny Pacquiao come up. He came up, and obviously now he's uh, one of the all-time greats. Uh, no, but what about what about the what about the under undercard? No, I, mean, I agree. Saying, the undercard the undercard wasn't that good. They were, the they undercard were was, an, was an embarrassment. And 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 I mean, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. But go ahead. No, no, I, I think they were mismatches. But um, uh, still, the guys that were fighting, I mean, they're rising stars on their own right. Victor Ortiz, Juan Manuel uh, Lopez, uh, those guys. You put them in the ring with anybody, you don't know they can knock anybody out in the first round. And obviously, that's what they did. You know, yeah, that's what they did, but but I, I didn't really. But yeah, but well, Oscar put the fight together. I believe that he was co-promoting the fight, yeah. and you got to know, you know, as you know, that uh, in boxing is not just going by the record, but you got to know with the style of the boxer. If you want to put on a card, 
And and uh, it's all about the entertainment value. And again, I stress in this kind of uh, the you know, the economy that we're living in, give us something more than these unknown fighters. Granted, they're both rising stars, but uh, who heard of them? Give us something else. Give us another title bout. Give us something that again that we could really sit back and enjoy. And then when the main bout comes around, come on, brother, fight. You gotta go. You can't go down without. That's the thing that upset me, man. If you're gonna get beat, get beat. But you gotta go down. You, you can't. You gotta go down with. Uh, you know, you gotta go down swinging. You can't go down without a fight. Throwing in the towel. That's what happened. George, Mike, thank you. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom, Raul on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey Tom, how you doing? I'm doing okay. Well, you know what? My my, my biggest thing, Tom. I, I'm a big boxing fan, and you know what? I'm Mexican, and every time De La Hoya had to fight against a big fighter, he always disappointed the Mexican community all the time. And I don't know how how idiots didn't didn't see this that De La Hoya was going to get his butt whooped. Pacquiao is in his prime. Pacquiao has beating has won the fights that he needed to win to get to the top. And if you look at De La Hoya's record, he's always lost the big fights. The only reason why he obviously makes money is because he's a promoter. So I don't understand these people saying that De La Hoya is a great champion and all this stuff. I mean, prove it. It's it's on the record when he had when even um one of the one of the good fighters is that that beat Cotto with Margarito. Margarito told him, "Hey, where's my fight at?" He wouldn't want to fight him because he's scared. And even and everybody saw the the world saw this last fight on how scared and how coward that he was. He couldn't even throw any punches uh, against somebody that. It's five feet, I mean, about five inches smaller than him. I mean, that's incredible, you know? Yeah, I... I love you, Tom. <laughs> Thank you for that. one 800 800 tom That's our telephone number. It's Bobby on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hey, how, how you doing, Tom? Doing okay? Um, people are missing a lot of big points in this fight. I think the biggest point was no one talks about Roach. He was Pacquiao's trainer. He was the one who trained De La Hoya. So I think he was the biggest wild card. He knew De La Hoya like the back of his hand. And he was the one who trained Pacquiao, and he knew De La Hoya. He knew every step De La Hoya knew. He was the one who trained De La Hoya for the big fight, if people really look into it. So I think he was a big wild card. It was a little bit of both, though. I mean, Manny, he's good, but I, I want to see Manny up against Mayweather or Hatton. Because these guys are going to bring it. Delahoya was a little past his prime. So I know Pacquiao's good, but, I mean, Tom, let's face it. Who wouldn't look good against that Delahoya? Anybody could have beat Delahoya in that day. So I want to see him either against a Hatton or a Mayweather. That would be a good You want to see him go back? I, I, I can't believe that somebody wants to see him fight again. No, 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 no. I want to see, I'm sorry, no, I want to see um, Pacquiao fight. Uh, oh, I see. Was, I thought you meant you wanted to see Dana Hoya. No, Dana Hoya's next fight will probably be at a Pachango or a Commerce Casino. Dana <laughs> 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 Hoya will fight again. Everyone's saying he won't. He'll fight probably a chump who he could probably beat. I love Dana Hoya, but Dana Hoya will fight again, but he will beat down a regular, a regular joke. Because there's no way Dana Hoya's going to go up against someone big. But he will fight again. Kachanga Casino, get your tickets ready. But I'm telling you right now, I want to see Pacquiao up against a Mayweather for a Hatton. Because these guys are in their primes, and these guys are good. I think the biggest point is Roach. He trained De La Hoya. He knew how De La Hoya was. I'm a big De La Hoya fan, but he's done. So that's it, Tom. Can I get taken out Kobe style, please? Here you go, Bobby. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom like is one eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. The Tom like is show. From Hollywood, it's the Tom Likas Show, now heard six days a week on 97.1 FM Talk in Los Angeles. 
Here is this Saturday from Total Six. Did you hear this past Saturday from Vegas? We were flooded with phone response on Saturday. Here is every Saturday, 2 to 6, on 97.1 FM Tonk. And uh, if you can't hear our show on the air because you don't live in Southern California or any other reason, go to our website, blowmeuptom.com. Click on the Listen Live button, blowmeuptom.com, between 2 and 6 p.m. Saturday. Or anytime we're on the air, and you can stream us live from anywhere in the world. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Manny Pacquiao uh, delivered a brutal beating to Oscar De La Hoya, who threw in the towel at the beginning of the ninth round on Saturday night. Did you see this? What do you think? Luis on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey. Long time, first time. Thank you. Uh, I just want to say, man, as... Uh... As a Mexican boxing fan, as a Mexican fighter myself, I would just like to say, like, man, that was just a complete embarrassment. If, okay, if this was supposed to be maybe one of his last fights, that dude should have gone out swinging. That was just completely embarrassing. I would just like to say that guy should just step down already. He has rallied us up already for more than one embarrassment. First, he takes Julio Cesar Chavez from us. Second, he chickens out versus Trinidad. Now, this. Come on. Like, that guy should just stop, let the next generation step up, and, you know, put a better name to it. Say, show, show that we can really back it up. But that guy didn't do nothing this fight. It was just an embarrassment. You know what? I give props to uh, to Pacquiao for, you know, really laying it down. But we need another Juan Manuel Marquez, uh, Barrera, uh, somebody else, man. You step up and shut that little, little you know, Pacquiao up, but <laughs> damn, dude, that was just an embarrassment. Hey, the Pacquiao, I, I hey, you have to admit that Pacquiao was good. Oh, yeah, he is good. He, the thing is that he lays it down on the line. He doesn't care. He knows that he has his nation behind him. He is considered the nation's one uh, national treasure. We need somebody like that. We need somebody like that. And you know what? Um, I'm pretty sure there's thousands of them out there, but we just don't have the break. But that's what we need, man. We need something like that. But you know what? I give Pacquiao props. Uh, he, he, he's, a, he's a fighter. He's a warrior. And you know what? De La Hoya is not. That's what I, that's what I want to say. Thank you, Luis. Can you, take, can, you take me down? can you take me out uh, African style, please? African tribal style. I can for sure. Baninge, 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 so finza. Baninge, 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 so finza. The Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. James on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. You know, I just want to start off by saying I'm not a huge boxing fan. Um, love boxing, but just not die hard. And the reason being is because they don't do nothing for you. You know, they have a fight on pay-per-view here and there, throw you a bone. But it used to be when I was a kid, you'd watch boxing every weekend and, and really get to know the fighters and really get to know the styles. And you'd follow it, and you'd have your favorite fighters. And when the pay-per-view fight came up, you were pumped up. You were ready to see it. Nowadays, they expect you to spend 60 bucks and not even know who's playing on the undercard because you've never seen them fight before. Yeah, you know, they don't even tell you who's on the undercards. Uh, many times you find out uh, after you've paid and tuned in. Right. I mean, there's so many other promotions out there that do such a better job. And, you know, these sponsors like Takate, instead of wasting their money on billboards, need to put their money where their mouth is and, and start going on network television once a week and bringing out new boxers, letting people fight and show their talent so people will get pumped up about boxing and want to pay the 60 bucks to watch these fights. Thank you, James, for the call. Here comes Ryan on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Ryan. Ryan went away at the last minute. Omar is listening to our online stream in Boston on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? Great. Great. I just want to say, man, all these guys talking about how uh, De La Hoya is a fixed fight. They know nothing about boxing. Pacquiao is probably the, one of the best fighters I've ever seen in my life. Uh, after the seventh round, I thought, during the seventh round, I thought they were going to stop the fight. I mean, the only reason they didn't is because they respect De La Hoya. Uh, I think Pacquiao is just ridiculously great. And uh, anybody that tries to say that uh, De La Hoya is a, a weak fighter is ridiculous. They they just don't know what he's done. I'm a hater. I don't like De La Hoya all that much. I thought he lost against Corte, but, uh, you know, 
it is what it is. He should be done. Uh, he should have been done after the Mayweather fight. And, uh, you know, that's really it. I just think that uh, Pacquiao is probably one of the greatest fighters I've ever seen in my life. Thank you, Omar. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Here comes Richard on the Tom Likas show. Hey, what's up, bro? Tom? Not much. How are you doing? Good. Yeah, I, I think DeLorea, you know, he's done, but he's a good fighter. He showed his point there that, uh, you know, at least he showed the, the best of, for East LA, and uh, he gave it all he's got. So, like his sister said, he gave it his, his heart, his passion, and, uh, you know, his body's not responding no more, but at least he, he showed that he can still fight a little bit more. So you want, do you want to see him fight again? No, nah, I, I think he's done. He's, he's, uh, he's pretty much done for that. Yeah. But he should just take to as, uh, you know, as the promoter that he is. That's what I, I agree with that. All right, Richard. Thank you for that. Carlos on the Tom Likas show. Hello. What's up, Tom? Not much. Yeah. Hey, uh, when I saw the fight, um, uh, his manager said to throw in the towel. He was just, he didn't say yes or no. So to me, he still wanted to go out there. But I think his manager was out, was probably out looking out for him because he was getting pretty beat up. And uh, I think Pacquiao was just, he's just more hungry. He's just a, a lot better fighter, you know. Well, you know, no, again, he's a lot better fighter at this stage in his career. I mean, Oscar was a great fighter, uh, but, uh, you know, it, it, it's starting to look like his day has passed. Yeah, so I was just trying to say, it's not like he threw in the towel, his manager, because, like I said, I was watching the whole thing, and he was just, he wasn't saying yes, he wasn't saying no, but his manager told him, you know what, you keep letting him hit you like that, I'm going to throw in the towel. So. I don't think any real fight fan wants to see Oscar go away. Yeah. We've all enjoyed watching him, and uh, uh, not just the way he fights, but uh, the way he uh, uh, takes care of his business. Uh, hey, hey, can I ask you something, Tom? Yeah. Hey, at the end of uh, Lacey Peterson style, what's what's what are they saying? Because I I keep trying to figure it out. Well, it is kind of garbled, but yeah. that comes from the phone call that Scott Peterson uh, made to his wife Lacey when uh, he was claiming to be. Uh, uh, actually, he didn't make it to Lacey. He made it to the the other chick. What was her name? Oh, Amber. Right, uh, oh, Amber okay. Fry. <laughs> That's the call to Amber Fry when he claimed he was in Paris. Oh, right. New Year's Eve, yeah. Um, what do you think about the Lakers uh, playing Boston? You think the Lakers are going to take them? Well, first of all, for, uh, oh, on Christmas Day? Yeah. Well, the Lakers are hot, hot, hot. Well, they... not, that's, not what I, that's not what I've been reading. I've been reading there's some type of friction going on right now. with. Uh, that doesn't mean the Lakers aren't hot. Uh, I'm sure there is some friction. Our email address, tom at blowmeuptom.com. The Tom Likas Show.